Why was the world's greatest superpower so concerned about events in a small island in the Caribbean? America was already within range of Soviet nuclear missiles based in the USSR. Why then did missiles in Cuba upset Kennedy so much? An American documentary made just after the crisis helps us to see these events the way Americans saw them. The new reconnaissance photographs are in. This time, some of the aircraft have flown almost at ground level, under Cuban radar, catching the anti-aircraft crews running for their guns. At this altitude, the evidence is unmistakable. It shows Russian IL-28 Beagle bombers capable of carrying nuclear weapons. And it shows offensive ballistic missiles being emplaced. These are medium range. These are intermediate range. Both have nuclear strike capabilities. All of the Western Hemisphere from Hudson's Bay to Lima, Peru is within their range. This next clip from a government information film also helps us to understand American attitudes. It might look funny, but think about how programs like this might influence American reactions to the discovery of missiles in Cuba. Be sure and remember what Bert the Turtle just did, friends, because every one of us must remember to do the same thing. That's what this film is all about. Duck and cover. This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. Produced by Archer Productions Incorporated. Hey, Bert, come on out and meet all these nice people, please. Oh, all right. We really can't blame you. You see, Bert is a very, very careful fellow. When there's danger, this is the way he keeps from being hurt. Sometimes it even saves his life. That's why these children are practicing to duck and cover just as you do in your school. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it, just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. On the 22nd of October, 1962, Kennedy made a live TV broadcast to the nation about the crisis. This clip from a film of that famous broadcast helps us to understand the tension of the moment and illustrates the way that Kennedy used television in his handling of the crisis. On October 22, 1962, President John F. Kennedy broadcast a special message to the nation from his office in the White House. Here is President Kennedy as he delivered that message bearing on recent events in Cuba. Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. The Cuban Missile Crisis enhanced Kennedy's reputation as a great leader. This was partly a result of the fact that Kennedy was one of the earliest politicians to use television effectively. A different extract from his broadcast on October 22nd shows how he presented his policies on Cuba to the American people. Our policy has been one of patience and restraint, as befits a peaceful 
and powerful nation which leads a worldwide alliance. We have been determined not to be diverted from our central concerns by mere irritants and fanatics. But now further action is required and it is underway. And these actions may only be the beginning. We will not prematurely or unnecessarily risk the course of worldwide nuclear war in which even the fruits of victory would be ashes in our mouth. But neither will we shrink from that risk at any time it must be faced. Acting therefore in the defense of our own security and of the entire Western Hemisphere and under the authority entrusted to me by the Constitution as endorsed by the resolution of the Congress, I have directed that the following initial steps be taken immediately. Kennedy's actions still cause argument today. Was he firm or was he reckless? Another part of the broadcast might help you decide. Study his language carefully. For example, his use of the terms quarantine and blockade. First, to halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment under shipment to Cuba is being initiated. All ships of any kind bound for Cuba, from whatever nation or port, will, if found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons, be turned back. This quarantine will be extended, if needed, to other types of cargo and carriers. We are not at this time, however, denying the necessities of life, as the Soviets attempted to do in their Berlin blockade of 1948. Second, I have directed the continued and increased close surveillance of Cuba and its military buildup. The foreign ministers of the OAS, in their communique of October 6, rejected secrecy on such matters in this hemisphere. Should these offensive military preparations continue, thus increasing the threat to the hemisphere, further action will be justified. I have directed the armed forces to prepare for any eventualities. And I trust that in the interest of both the Cuban people and the Soviet technicians at the sites, the hazards to all concerned of continuing this threat will be recognized. Third, it shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. Admirers of Kennedy argued that during the crisis, he got the balance of toughness and negotiation just right. The next two extracts can help us test this view. The first is from a newsreel at the time, and the second is from a Defense Department documentary made a few years later. Meanwhile, the United States continues to reinforce its Cuban base at Guantanamo Bay, the naval depot that Castro wants the U.S. to give up. These Marines have been assigned the job of protecting the base against any Cuban threats that might arise during the present crisis. They'll be on a 24-hour alert, a first line of defense. At the United Nations, Ambassador Stevenson takes America's case to the world. He asks Russia's ambassador, Do you, Ambassador Zoran, deny that the USSR has placed and is placing medium and intermediate range missiles and sites in Cuba? Yes or no? <laughs> you will have your answer in due course. I'm prepared to wait for my answer until hell freezes over, if that's your decision. There is no doubt that the Cuban Missile Crisis was serious. But did people know just how serious it was at the time? How useful is this next extract from an American documentary? There follows 24 hours of intensive civilian and diplomatic activity, and the nation lines up behind the president. I'd, I'd hate like heck to see us go to war, but if it's necessary to, uh, to prevent a nuclear war, I think uh, the action has to be taken at this time. Well, I think it's uh, high time we uh, stop Russia from having things her own way. I mean, only have a few more months to go on reserves, and I just hope they don't grab me, that's all. I know that some action should be taken, but uh, he's going to have to tread very lightly short of war. I think it's gone beyond the stage of whether or not we support uh, the president 
Well, we don't support them. We're, it's way past that. Suddenly, the idea of civil defense no longer seems either useless or foolish. Suddenly, millions of Americans are asking one question. How can I make my family safe? Suddenly, it seems very important to have adequate supplies in every home. In some parts of the country, supermarket shelves are stripped bare. Yet if the worst had come, most of these second thoughts would have been too late. Was 1962 a victory for Kennedy, for Soviet leader Khrushchev, for both, or for neither? These next two extracts suggest it was an American victory, but study the tone, style, and content carefully, and a slightly more complex picture emerges. The uh, following is the text of uh, President Kennedy's statement of uh, noon. I welcome Chairman Khrushchev's statesmanlike decision to stop building bases in Cuba, dismantling offensive weapons, returning them to the Soviet Union under UN verification. This is an important and constructive contribution to peace. A final chapter in the Cuban crisis is brought to a close as President Kennedy holds a news conference to announce that Soviet bombers on Cuban soil would be withdrawn by Russia. These are the planes that Castro claimed he would not relinquish. But Mr. Kennedy says that he has a pledge right from the Kremlin. I have uh, today been informed by Chairman Khrushchev that all of the IL-28 bombers now in Cuba will be withdrawn in 30 days. He also agrees that these planes can be observed and counted as they leave. Inasmuch as this goes a long way towards reducing the danger which faced this hemisphere four weeks ago, I have this afternoon instructed the Secretary of Defense to lift our naval quarantine. We will not, of course, abandon the political, economic, and other efforts of this hemisphere to halt subversion from Cuba, nor our purpose and hope that the Cuban people shall someday be truly free. But these policies are very different from any intent to launch a military invasion of the island. May I add this final thought? In this week of Thanksgiving, there is much for which we can be grateful. As we look back to where we stood only four weeks ago, the unity of this hemisphere, the support of our allies, and the calm determination of the American people. These qualities may be tested many more times in this decade, but we have increased reason to be confident that those qualities will continue to serve the cause of freedom with distinction in the years to come. Finally, did the crisis leave any lessons for the future? Think about the provenance of this clip, as well as its content, and ask yourself what it suggests about the prospects for peace.